Shlam Amchon. This is the gospel reading for the sixth Sunday of summer, which is taken from St. Luke's Gospel, from chapter 17. It's chapter 17 of Luke, uh, verses 5 through 20. We're going to focus on 11 through 20 because uh, last Sunday we covered a good portion of this. is one of two Sundays in the year where the gospel uh, has about half of the reading that's repeated. So last Sunday we had about half before the first part of this, and then now we've got the first part plus extra. I'm going to focus on that second, the second chunk of the text, just because I've already covered the prior. So let's get into it. Um, let's deal with the Aramaic. I noticed a lot of interest in that. Starting verse 12. <laughs> As he was close to the entrance of a village, happened upon him, encountered him, ten um, leprous men, they rose from afar, from a distance. And they raised up their voice, and said, Rabban ishot rahmalain. Our Rabbi, our teacher, um, although here it's using Rabban, which I'm used to seeing more in, in like Talmudic literature. So it's a first century Jewish title for Jesus, Rabban. Like you have Rabban Gamliel, Rabban Shimon, you have Rabban Isho here. It's just interesting usage. Rabban Isho at Rachmalein. Kedchza innon emalhon zil. As he saw them, he told them, Go. Chavon Shchon, show yourself. Lchan to the priests, obviously the ones in the temple. Uched azin et daki. Chadin minhon, but one of them. Ked chza et daki, as he saw that he was made pure. Pachle wawkala rama. He returned to him, to Jesus. Wawkala rama mshabach walalaha. He was glorifying unto God. Yudwaw. 16. And he fell upon his face. Notice that face is plural. He fell upon his faces. We always have faces. Just Syriac. Before his feet. Jesus. As confessing him. And this one was a Samaritan. This guy is a Samaritan. So it's interesting that he is his confessing him. Probably here, given the interaction as a zadika, as a rabban who is very zadika, as a zadik rabban, as a as a righteous teacher who is obvious that he's righteous because he not only healed him but brought him back into um, to fulfillment of the commandments, and this is, I think, what at the time the historical sense of this passage is. This is one of ten men. Um, who actually comes back and now wants to learn how to fulfill the commandments from Jesus because Jesus is the one who restored him to being able to fulfill the commandments. There's my thesis statement. I'm going to prove it. But let's finish the last couple of verses. Yud Zen 17. Jesus replied and said, Lahwa Usra. Havan Halin Edakil. Were they not ten that were those who were purified? Eka Ennun Tisha. Where are the Nine. Why is it that none would choose to raise up praise unto God except this one from a foreign people? Right? He's Samaritan. And he said to him, Go, rise, go, your faith has given you life, has made you live. So what I think is going on in this verse is that you first have these uh, ten um, lepers. And a leper can't properly fulfill the commandments of, of the Oreta, of, of the Torah. He's a leper, he's unclean, he's not able to offer sacrifice, morning sacrifice, evening sacrifice. Um, he can't even properly offer a sacrifice of prayers. He's unclean, so 
he, he's deprived of that. And so Jesus reprives him. He gives it back to him. He, he takes these ten and he gives them the ability to fill the commandments because Jesus is coming in to the city. They call out Rabban Isho. So they're calling to him as a teacher of the law. He's, they're calling to him as somebody whose job it is to get God's commandments, to get the five books of Moses completed, right? He, Jesus's job here, as they see it, right? They're calling him with the title of Rabban, is to get people to do God's will. And that's exactly what Jesus does. That's, that's the gospel. If you listen to it, especially when, like in Matthew 5, Jesus is putting out what his job is in his own words, you get that that's what's being proclaimed. And so they recognize him that him, and they call unto him, Rabban Isho, et Racham Allah, have mercy on us. So they know him also to be a miracle working um, teacher of the law. He's someone who not only gets people through his teaching to do God's uh, commandments, but also enables them. He, they know that they're lepers, that they have classic inability in the. Um, in the the oreta in the in Moses's law that they can't properly fulfill their duty before God and that this Rabban Isho this our teacher Jesus will heal that because that's what he does so they're calling upon him have mercy on me and Jesus sees them and tells them go show yourself to the priest they're going to be healed they got what they wanted Jesus says go show yourself to the priest because that's what they have to do they have to offer the sacrifice and their purity understood, reinstated to um, the state in which they can stand before God doing God's commandments, right? They're, they've been re in, they've been brought back into the world of those who can be doers of the oreta, of God's word of, of scripture under the commandments of, you know, under the Mosaic law. And then you've got the really interesting part, and one of them, as Noticing that he himself is cured, he returns, goes back, and he glorifies God. And falling upon his face before Jesus, he's confessing him. Now the question, what is he confessing about him? And we usually fall into a trap when we're reading the New Testament. And I think the church fathers, especially old Syriac ones, are pretty good at avoiding this trap. They didn't know... This guy does not know Jesus yet necessarily as Messiah, God the Son, the Trinity, all that isn't necessarily on the top. He knows him as Rabban Isho. What is he doing when he mauda le? That he is confessing Jesus. What is he confessing him? He's confessing him as a teacher of the law. He's confessing that he is going to learn from this great teacher of the law. That if this teacher of the law purified me, I'm going to go and follow what he tells me to do. I want to do God's will. I saw God in action. This truly has changed my life. Now, all 10 of them were excluded from the common practice of Israel because all 10 of them would defile any one of their neighbors, friends, or fellow God worshipers by being a leper and having others come in contact with them in a way that would cause ritual defilement. So all of their lives were severely disrupted on a practical level but also spiritually the question is which are they prioritizing is it that christ simply likes to make people feel better in which case the nine were right why go back right or is it that christ is healing them so they can do his commandments in which case the samaritan who ironically of course is not so he's not okay with the law he he's an outsider he's not a full proper Jew, yet the Samaritan is the one who's fulfilling his Jewishness. What's interesting about the Samaritans, they're not idolaters. They are people who have a little bit of a strangeness in their practice of the Oreta. But that makes them close enough to really function here. So, he he falls upon his face before Jesus confessing him, right, saying that I will follow what you teach me. The Samaritan seeks to do that. And that also makes sense of Maudale. Why is he confessing him? He's a Samaritan. He basically is offering to convert and become a Talmud, a Talmida, a student of Jesus. There it is. For this one was a Samaritan. Right? I think that, that really clarifies everything. And Jesus answered him and says, weren't there ten that were purified? So I brought ten into being able to, you know, 
put on tefillin on their arms and go and say their prayers in the morning properly and um, to you know read of scripture and touch holy things and and observe the Sabbath with their families. There are ten of them that I that I that I opened the door for that, and yet you're the only. Um, where where are the other nine, right? You would think that somebody who's not who's such a great teacher of oreta of, of the Torah of God's will of the Scriptures heals someone so that they can do it. They'd come back and say, "Now teach me how to do it," right? I've been a leper all these years. I want to learn how to observe the law the way you teach us to observe the law. That's the point. Jesus is there to teach people to observe the law. That's how this New Testament opens up. And the other nine don't come back to learn to observe the law. The one Samaritan is the one who comes back to Rabbanisha, to Jesus, you know, Jesus Christ, and says, I confess in, in, in your belief, right? And then Jesus gives him a beautiful line. Why didn't they choose to come and give praise unto God, but this one from a foreign people? So it doesn't matter that... You're a proper Jewish Israelite. The Samaritan, I can, at least, is here. I can do something with him, right? I, I can bring his, the Messiah of Israel can bring salvation to the Samaritan. The other nine, you know, they thought it had to do with their ability to enjoy their social position rather than to fulfill their role before God, as as Jesus just made them able to do. So he says very interestingly to the Samaritan. Go. Arise, go. Your faith has made you to live. So, what is faith? It's doing God's commandments. What did the Samaritan do? He came to do God's commandments. So, Christ gives him this blessing of simply saying, I've purified you. You have emuna. You have heimanutha. You have belief. You have the desire to do the commandments, go do them. Because it's that faith, the one that made you come back here to learn how to live the commandments, to camp, that made you come back here and confess. Remember, he's confessing in Rabban Isho, in a teacher of the law, in somebody who's, and that's all Jesus is doing. He's healing people, he's restoring them to a proper position of someone who can be doing God's will, somebody who can be doing the commandments, right? So they can go back to church, they can fast on Wednesday and Friday, and receive communion on Sunday. So think of it as someone who's excommunicated, right? Jesus brought all ten back into communion. One of those is kind of from a semi, you know, schismatic sect, not heretical, but schismatic. Um, same church, but kind of what a division there. And he pulls them back in to not being leprous anymore. But that doesn't mean that he's pulled them back into normal Israelite worship, as Jewish worship. However, because the other nine aren't there, and this one comes and confesses, Jesus tells him, go, your faith causes you to live. And there we get the whole point of um, Christ's work with us, of our the purpose of our faith. It's so that our will united to the will of God. God shares his will, his oreta with us, Christ puts it in our um, hearts. He gives us uh, his own body and blood to be the qurban, to be um, the, the purging of our sins so that we're baptized into this practice of the kingdom, so that everything we do as human beings needs to be like what Christ is doing to make here on earth the will of the Father in heaven. Amen.